Naval artillery is artillery mounted on a warship, originally used only for naval warfare and then subsequently used for shore bombardment and anti-aircraft roles. The term generally refers to tube-launched projectile firing weapons and excludes self-propelled projectiles such as torpedoes, rockets, and missiles and those simply dropped overboard such as depth charges and naval mines. FADR-27 naval cannon is a modern defensive weapon capable of destroying surface and air targets. The specialists of Haddad Industrial Group succeeded in building it after a six-year effort. This cannon is a fully automatic weapon that is electro-hydraulically driven. So far, the main bullets used for the Fajr 27 cannon are of the contact fuse type. Shots with fuse contact are based on direct impact and must be fired at the target after being targeted optically, or radar and exploded after being hit directly. In a naval conflict scenario, the cannon can be used when two vessels collide, or when a low-flying target, such as a helicopter, is in the area of operation. But when there are threats such as cruise missiles or supersonic fighters, this cannon will not work with this type of ammunition. Iran has successfully pursued an asymmetric strategy of militarily offsetting the US and its Persian Gulf neighbors, but a UN ban on selling high-end weapons to Tehran expires in less than a year, potentially opening the floodgates to Iran becoming a much more formidable adversary, according to the Defense Intelligence Agency. The Islamic Republic has accelerated its efforts to modernize its military and enhance domestic production of military equipment. At present, the Iranian military is still dependent on Russia, China, North Korea and other foreign suppliers to procure much of its requirement for military equipment. Based on Khomeini's guidelines, the Iranian military has recently put particular focus on producing military weapons and other equipment at home and reduced the country's dependence on foreign suppliers to a minimum. Last year, Iran's supreme leader had stressed that Iran's defensive capability and power must be increased so that the bullying powers would feel threatened. In addition to meeting military needs domestically, the Iranian military also seeks to become a major arms exporter in the future. In January, Degan announced that the Islamic Republic was ready to export small-caliber ammunition to foreign countries. By inaugurating and launching this production line, in addition to meeting all needs of the armed forces to small-caliber ammunition, the production capacity for such ammunition has doubled and the ground is paved to export it as well. Tehran's relatively modest defense investments in recent decades have yielded some impressive niche capabilities, enabling long-range precision strike, naval guerrilla warfare, and proxy operations. The regime has used these to gain leverage and project influence while avoiding a major regional war. Thus, Iran's drones and missiles own long-range precision strike forces can hit U.S. military bases and other targets throughout the region. In Tehran's view, the success is that its proxies and partners have registered in the Middle East, expelling Israeli forces from Lebanon in 2000, ousting U.S. forces from Iraq in 2011, and defeating the U.S. Saudi Zionist conspiracy to unseat Bashar al-Assad in Syria since 2011, have vindicated its approach of using force to shape the regional security environment. 
Iran also regards its armed forces as an effective deterrent against a large conventional attack. A mindset no doubt reinforced by Washington's reluctance to employ military levers as an integral part of its maximum pressure policy. Iran is therefore likely to maintain this basic approach if the ban on arms transfers ends later this year, while filling capability gaps and selectively modernizing its conventional forces to reflect lessons learned in Syria. To this end, it would try to purchase at least some of the systems it has been unable to produce domestically, such as advanced surface-to-air missiles, SAMs, fighter aircraft, infantry fighting vehicles, and tanks. Indeed, media reports indicate it has already approached Russia about buying Su-30 fighters, S-400 SAMs, T-90 tanks, modern artillery systems, and Yakintanti ship cruise missiles. Likewise, it would probably continue strengthening its guerrilla navy by acquiring advanced mines, torpedoes, and anti-ship ballistic missiles. It is also likely to enhance the expeditionary capability of its Shia Foreign Legion by acquiring fixed and rotary wing close support aircraft, transport helicopters, and intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance technology, potentially enabling proxies to conduct sustained operations abroad independent of Russian air and fire support. Yet across the board military modernization is unnecessary to achieving Iran's core national security goals, which depend on only a handful of robust, niche capabilities. And while the lack of hard cash and other factors may prevent Tehran from negotiating co-production and technology transfer deals. The regime would likely acquire at least modest amounts of more advanced arms, thereby enabling its industries to reverse engineer and eventually produce some of these weapons on their own. Without the ban, Tehran may have more opportunities to acquire parts, components, machine tools, computer-aided production technologies, and special materials needed to produce more advanced systems. Yet even under the current restrictions, Tehran has been able to procure commercial, off-the-shelf, dual-use items using convoluted and expensive clandestine procurement schemes. Many of these are small-ticket items that are available from numerous sources, difficult to track, and affordable even for fiscally constrained Iran. Over time, the regime has used these acquisitions to produce an impressive range of simple but highly capable weapons systems that are good enough for its needs and allow it to punch far above its weight. <laughs>